Hey church, thanks for tuning in tonight. We're so glad that you're here and uh, we're back to these devotions. Man, I love this time together and we're so glad that we could just spend some time to be with you. You know, I missed you over the last week where we've just been taking some time and space to to regather, reconnect and, and just uh, let some of social media flow off of us for a little while. Um, you know, it's been a crazy time in, in our country and in the church and with COVID and, and the racial realities that we've been looking at. And church, I just want to remind you about the unity that's found in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We call ourselves the light and life, the people loving place that so we're a reflection of Revelation 7. Every tribe and every tongue, every nation worshiping before the throne room. That's our heart is that we would come together to worship Christ, that we'd see our diversity, that we would love one another, that we would value one another, and that we would really uh, give the world this example of what unity is supposed to look like and probably one of the most divided times that we've experienced in a long time. One of the things that I'm really excited about here at Light and Life that we do um, is we have a Celebrate Recovery program. And on June 23rd, Tuesday, June 23rd, our CR is gonna be relaunching. They're gonna be moving back onto campus, on site. And this has been something a lot of people are asking for that are going through recovery. And I know there's like this stereotype that comes with Celebrate Recovery. The idea is like, well, if you struggle with drugs, then you go to CR, but really everybody struggles with something. We call them hurts and habits and hangups. And so this is a place for everyone to mend and be healed um, in the love and reconciliation that comes through Christ. It's a 12 step Christian program that allows you to walk these steps as you begin to reconcile these things and find recovery in Jesus. Tom and Pauline Gill, who lead our Celebrate Re uh, Recovery program, are just amazing lay leaders in our church. And as you get to know them better as we come back, take some time to meet them and, and hear their story. They have an absolutely incredible story about why they love Celebrate Recovery and how it's been working in their life. You can share this with somebody right now as you're on Facebook or YouTube, subscribe to our channel. We just want to be connected with you as often as possible. I'm going to share uh, just a quick word tonight. It's a, it's a short and simple word and uh, it's a word that I think will really encourage us uh, to take inventory of some of what we've been experiencing in the midst of the reality of what 2020 has been like. Somebody told me 2020 was going to be a year of vision where God was going to show us new things. Sometimes God shows us hard things and they, they don't happen the way we think. Everybody thought 2020 is going to be a year of abundance and blessing and overflow. But how many of us know that God works the most through the hard times that it's some of the hardest times in our life that we learn and grow the most in Christ, that he shows us that he really does work together all things for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. We experience hard things and God grows us. And so I'm excited to share with you a little bit tonight. I do this thing every day. I do it every day. Um, it's an important part of my daily routine. I usually do it at night. I'm a night owl. I know some of you love to wake up early in the morning and I'll pray for you. I need coffee just to get up at nine o'clock. That's the kind of person that I am. I'm not an early riser. I love the night. I love to be awake. I, I love to be up late and I love to just write and think and learn and grow and, and even exercise and do those things in the evening. And you know, it's really a time where I can let the things of the day fade away and God begins to speak to me. And one of the things that I've learned to do that's really come out of a principle, um, a step that I've learned in Celebrate Recovery is this thing that I call summoning. And really what it is, is it's just a moral inventory of my life. And so in the fourth step in Celebrate Recovery, one of the things uh, it teaches us to take a fearless and searching moral inventory of your life. Like who are the people that you still feel like you hate? Um, who are the people that you hold regret, uh, resentments against and the places and the times and the things that you've been through that you're still holding on to that don't allow you to fully grow in relationship and connection with God and with others? And so I learned this. I, I did my first moral inventory. Um, I had been a believer for about, I think, a year and a half. And I had started going to a Celebrate Recovery. A friend of mine that I knew from before we were believers was now leading a Celebrate Recovery in Southern California. He said, hey, Sean, you could come and you could just learn a little bit. And so I did. And it was a place where I really began to grow. And then I went through this thing um, called a step study. And in the step study, you do this 12-step uh, program, really that 
leads through about a year. And when I got to the fourth step, this is where God really began to wreck me because I began to write all these things down, things that I was angry about and frustrated about and that I had held on to. It's like I was taking all this luggage and just leaving it at my front door and trying to live out of a bag instead of putting stuff away. And so all of a sudden I was aware of like all this baggage that was on me. I realized that I had a huge anger problem that I needed to deal with. And I realized that that anger was leaking out at other people in ways that it shouldn't. So I began to write this inventory and through that whole process, God really began to work on me. You know, uh, the scripture that it gives for the moral inventory is Lamentations 340. And it says, let us examine our ways and test them and let us return to the Lord. And it's important for us to recognize how we're doing things. What, How does it match up with the word of God? And then return to God and ask God for forgiveness or the help that we need to do things different in the future. One thing that you'll hear a lot if you come to celebrate recovery. And again, it's for people with hurts, habits and hangups. It's not just for people with a drug addiction. You can be addicted to many things. You can be addicted to worry, anxiety, fear. You can be addicted to anger. You can be addicted addicted to resentment. You can hold on to abandonment issues that don't allow you to have strong relationships. This is a place for healing for everyone. We call it the forever family. And it's really an opportunity for people to find healing in our church. You know, at Light and Life, our mission is to reach, teach, mend, and send. And CR is part of our mend. It's a place where God really allows us to find healing. And so lamentation reminds us that we examine ourselves, that we we test them, we look at it, and then we return to the Lord and we say, God, how do we need to grow? And so this was something that I started doing. And I realized beyond my step study that it was something that I needed to start doing every day that there's this sin nature that's inside of me. We've all been born with it and we all deal with it on a regular basis. We're all being sanctified. We're all being made more like Christ every day, but we have struggles and issues that we're dealing with. And I was reminded that, you know, even after I crossed out that list, new things were being added. Anytime somebody hurt me anytime something happened that uh, really was a broken thing that wasn't from God, but was in the world because of the broken world that we live in. When those things would happen to me, it was like, I need to do my inventory all over again. So I started building in this rhythm and I call it summoning. Every day I would just write down three things I did do, three things I didn't do, three things I want to do tomorrow. Just write down like, what am I sinning in? What do I need to grow in? What do I need to let go of? What do I need to learn? What what have people told me that's hard, that has some truth in it? And so my encouragement to you is to try celebrate recovery. Like that's my encouragement to you. I know there's this huge stigma and everybody thinks like, oh, if I go there, then I'm going to be seen different or I'm admitting that I have this huge issue or people are going to think things about me. But Celebrate Recovery is a place of anonymity. It's a place where you can come. You can be yourself, lay titles aside. People don't talk about what you've said or what you've done, but it's this safe space that you can come to every Tuesday here at Light and Life, every Tuesday. And then if you need something deeper, you can jump into a step study. Tom and Pauline will lead step studies again. They're finishing them up and they're going to start them again on Thursdays. And it's this safe space where you can give these things up to God, where you can take this inventory, where you can remind yourself that these things need to be lifted off of you and that God still needs to work in you. How many of us know that sometimes as we've been Christians for a while, we begin to get a little bit lazy with things, don't we? Well, I already know that. I don't need to hear that or I've learned that and we don't relearn things that God wants to remind us. And so it's just a place and a space for us to feel connected and a part of the family. Maybe you don't need to go to celebrate recovery. Maybe right now you're like, I can't go, Sean. I want to go, but I really want to stay at home. The reality is this, you can begin to do an inventory on your own. Just write down three things you did do, three things that you didn't do, and three things that you want to do tomorrow. Maybe three things that you did that you were like, man, I really don't want to do this and I want God to work in me. I want God to change this. Write them down and then Get some ideas about how you can do things different. Find a mentor, find a leader. We call it a sponsor, but really it could be anyone that's more spiritually mature than you and ask them, can you help me make these decisions to do these things different? And then the things that we don't do, you know, all the things that we say we're going to do, like at the beginning of the year, we make diet plans and exercise plans and we're going to do this and we have great goals. And now we're about halfway through the year. We find ourselves in June and 
we've given up a lot of those things or, or life has shifted so much that we think we can't still do what God wants us to do. And there's an opportunity for you to say, I still want to see these things happen. How can I make these things happen in the reality that I find myself in? And then that third part is what can I do tomorrow? How do I get to doing the things that I need to do? Paul says this, I, I don't do the things I want to do. I, I do the things I don't want to do. You can give those up to God and God can begin to change you and shape you and remake you just like he did with Paul. He gave him a new name, a new ministry. And, and because of Ananias reaching into his heart and literally praying life over him, he becomes the greatest evangelist that's ever existed. But the reality is he needed to grow. He needed to take inventory of the harm that he'd done. And out of doing that, he was able to grow into the person that he knew he needed to become. So I remind you of Lamentations. Take a searching and fearless moral inventory. Maybe you want to try out CR and get to know Tom and Pauline. Reach out to me. I'd love to share their number where you could get connected and you could be a part of that forever family. We're going to offer these spaces at our church. We're going to continue to offer spaces of healing because you know how it works. God comes into your life and he changes you, but you still have to live tomorrow. And you still have to deal with the brokenness of this life. We live in a broken world. We live in a broken world. I know the world is divided right now on how to bring solutions to that, but we can all agree on the reality that we live in a broken world. But if God begins to heal you, then you begin to fix some of the brokenness. You know, Pastor Larry told me something that stuck in my heart when I was a young believer. He said, Sean, hurt people, hurt people, but healed people, heal people. And that's our heart for our church is that in the midst of division, we would show unity and we would have conversations. We don't have to agree on everything, but at the same time, if we would learn to deal with hurt, then instead of hurting other people, we would become healed. And now we can bring that healing out to others. It's kind of like the woman at the well. You guys know it's my favorite story. I love it. If you've heard me preach, you've heard me preach that scripture. Hurt person that got healed and now brought healing to others. So how could God want to heal your hurt? How could God want to use your brokenness? How would God maybe take the things that you've been through, turn it into a testimony? You know, we say things like mess into a message, test into a testimony, but instead of just saying those sayings, what if we really lived like that was really real? And that's what God really does, because it is what he does, church. And he wants to do it for you. He wants to do it for me. He wants to do it for everyone. You know, I, I learned that um, when I took my moral inventory, a lot of times I was acting out instead of acting for. What's the difference? When we act out, we act out of our selfish nature. But when we act for, we listen to the voice of God and we do what God is asking us to do. Sometimes that's the hard thing. Sometimes that's saying, I'm sorry, offering forgiveness, calling somebody out for something you know is wrong, but loving them enough to walk them through the healing process. See, that's telling the truth in love. That's taking an inventory and recognizing you're not perfect. Other people aren't perfect. The only perfect person that's ever lived is Jesus. And that perfection is drawing us to reconciliation. So we are to love one another, to serve one another. And this is an opportunity for us to take inventory about how we can do that. Not just what we're going to do. You know how it is. A lot of times you hear a sermon or you hear a message and you think, that's great. But how do I start? Like, how do I start doing this? This is a simple way that you could start. If you can't do it on your own, come to Celebrate Recovery. If you can't do it on your own, find a spiritual mentor. If you can't do it on your own, maybe just write it down. Get it out of your head. See how it looks. Be honest with yourself so that God can really speak to you. My encouragement is that we would grow, that we would learn, that we would be healed people that heal people, that we would mend the hurts of this life. Let me pray for you, church. Father, I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to, to die for us, to show us how to live. And by his spirit, we can take inventory, be empowered to be different than we were tomorrow. The, the great thing about the Christian life is not only have we been made new when we follow Christ, but every day is a new opportunity to serve Jesus. No matter where we've been or what we've done, we can look forward to healing and we can look forward to the resurrection power that lives inside of us that is reconciling and redeeming us, not just to you, God, but to each other. 
So may we take inventory. May we recognize those areas of prejudice or, or areas where we've been hurt so we're shut off, areas where we're afraid to be open and honest with people, areas where we can just come to you, God, and say, I need healing. And thank you, God, that we're the kind of church that offers spaces for this, not just celebrate recovery, but counseling and, and other options, Lord. But this is a great place to start. It's a great place to just come and say, I have an issue that I need to deal with. You know, hiding issues never heal anything. So God, would you bring awareness and openness? Would you turn on the light so we could see the brokenness? And would you begin to heal us from the inside, Lord? so that we could share it on the outside with other people. Lord, that's our prayer, that's our heart, that we would be the people-loving place because you first loved us. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Amen, love you, church. So glad that you've tuned in. I really wanna encourage you, Wednesday night is gonna be a powerful time of worship, praise, and the word. Don't forget, we're going back to live services on Wednesday night, so you can tune in live with us. If you wanna see the whole service, you're gonna have to tune in live 7 p.m. Take the time to be there, be connected with the community. We're looking forward to regathering with you soon, and we bless you in Jesus' name.